Coming out here for the first time was amazing. And then, you know, sort of doing the first gig in Long Island, we walked out on stage and people actually saw us. They were horrified. If the lyrics are nothing like Get Back, I mean, the lyrics, it's just gobbledygook. But so is Karma Chameleon. Hello? George, are you hiding somewhere? And no, I'm, I'm in my very loud with a big hat. Den of iniquity? <laughs> How are you? Don't get up. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't getting up. I'm like stuck here Great now. Great pleasure that's to meet you. I found my you. position, that's good, you know. Wow, I knew you'd have a hat on. Well, I did that's debate a, that's it. That's a classy one, I like that. I actually that. had this made, literally, in the last two days. I, I kid you really? not. This beautiful woman, I've forgotten her name now, She's just made this in two days because we our hats are in transit because we're on tour. You mean a fan made it for no, you? No, a hat maker. But a fan? No. No? I'm paying for it. It's not free. Why aren't they, Glad a, is. Why aren't they a fan? What's wrong with <laughs> well, them? Maybe she's a fan. A lot of people who make hats are fans of mine. <clears throat> Milliners I'll and bet. makeup artists. People that sort of, you know, work around the head. And why do you suppose <laughs> this sartorial choice, what, is, what does that say about you, a person, that they want to wear hats? Is there something you think that, I mean, it's a... Some people are hat people and some are not, but it's a minority. When I was a teenager, I didn't have great hair. I had it like when I was a kid, I had amazing hair and I could do a lot with it and I did do a lot with it, but I tortured it. The little hair I had, I had very thin hair. And as I got older, it's got thinner. So I, right. although I have hair, I do have hair, not quite as much as you. <laughs> Prove it. Do you want me to move it? Okay. Oh. Have hair. Oh, you have a nice head of hair. hair but, yeah. But I just love hats because yeah. they kind of just extend the moment. They add a sort of certain. Yeah. And also hats, as you just said rightly, there are hat people and there are people who look so ridiculous in hats because hats have to wear you. And that might sound crazy, but that is a fact. You know when I learned too late in life? I mean, thank God I learned it at some point. But like when I was younger, I would obsess about every, when I was much better looking, of course, because you're younger, uh, obsess about every little flaw. And like I realized when I was <laughs> much less good looking, People, when they see you, including sexual attraction from the opposite sex or the same sex or whatever, farm animals, whatever you're into, but they make an immediate sort of, just an overall impression. And it, it, it's like, I guess they take in whatever flaws we have, or lucky some people have none, uh, and it doesn't matter. It's like, oh, there's an attractive person or intriguing or there's something about them that like turns me on. And it's not about the, the details. Sometimes it's power. Sometimes it's fame. Sometimes it's right. financial. Or it's you know, just, sometimes just it's a, everything. You're a swagger. I also feel like you can't separate the person from everything they do, what they wear. No, I'm, they, I'm what just they saying. Think. You know, it's kind of a whole package. That's what I'm saying. It's like we take in the totality of Boy George, you know, you're an iconic figure. Well, I think I... And we want you to, you, you, it's like Mickey Mouse without whatever. But it's that interesting <laughs> thing about... Mickey Mouse wear, but About you, being attractive, though, it's interesting because obviously when I was a kid, people said, oh, your, you know, your daughter's so pretty. That's what I got when I was a kid. And I wrote it, yeah, a little girl. They say to my mom, well, your daughter's gorgeous. And it used to really drive me crazy. And then I think there was the point where I thought, oh, there's, there's, there's mileage in the feminine thing. I can start encouraging it. When I discovered makeup, you know, I always joke that I create myself from cardboard and glitter because once I discovered makeup and discovered what I could do to my quite plain face in a way, that was when it started to really change my relationship with the world, being attractive. You know, my my friend is uh, Chris Reed. He's kid in Kid in Play. Remember the rap group? Yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. Okay, so, you know, we joke all the time because he's approaching 60. And you're, when you're named Kid, you know, it's a little like, uh, do you remember the band uh, Sergio Mendez in Brazil, 66? Are you two? I've heard the name, yeah. They sang The Look of Love. Oh, yeah. You know that song? Yeah, of course, it's a hot, yeah. still a hot song. And Brazil, 66 may have been a little short-sighted <laughs> you know, to call yourself or 20th century fox. You yeah, know? I mean, the boy thing is, I kind of like it, you know. It's kind of like part of my brand now, even though it's kind of a scary thing for a punk to say. <laughs> well, look at you, you made yourself into a brand. That's, that's getting pretty high in life, don't you think? Well... You must feel pretty good about the whole, how the whole thing came out in the wash. No, I like to... Messing around with the concepts of what I am. I don't really want to be 
particularly comfortable. I like to, you know, because you can end up being in a sort of career that you don't really enjoy. So you've got to be careful of that. You know what I mean? You know, you're a rare uh, exception. I, I like your last album. I've never met which one. The, <laughs> it's, it starts with God and love. Oh, you're talking about blood. Yeah, this is what I do. Mm. The one about my God is bigger than your God. That's a different one, but the, oh, God and love, God and love, God and love. There's a lot of God in my songs. Yes, a lot. And the one about, more of a question than a sort of more of a question than anything. I think that's why it appears a lot in my work: God, love, religion, faith. But I f like uh, a little like I feel about Sinatra. Well, I like his later stuff much more than the early stuff. Well, I think that's good though because I, I mean, think it's you've got but to get it's better. Rare. You've got to get better, you know. But most musicians. But don't. in it, well, we're in an industry that most tells you all the time don't. you can't get better. A lot of people tell you all the time, you know, that like you have to stay loyal to what you created 30 years ago. And as an artist, you know, that's. Kind of boring. That album is very masculine, I feel. So am I. No. I <laughs> Shock. <laughs> it's a geezer. <laughs> <laughs> really? Even that kind of thing. You know, I mean, I understand people nowadays kind of rejecting those rigid terms because I think when you're in the public eye, once you say you're gay, it becomes this kind of thing that dances ahead of you, you know? And I always say my gayness takes up about four hours a month if I'm lucky. You know, if I'm lucky. Really? Yeah, I mean, I don't go around like eating gay bread and drinking gay cups of <laughs> cappuccino and having gay almond milk and gay kale. I mean, I live in the world. You but know. eggs are gay, right? I live in the world. My pets, my pets are all gay. I have any right. pets. But, but yeah, what no, about it's not as all consuming for me as, the, well, I've been doing it a long time. What I've been about, gay a long time, I'm over it. What, <laughs> <laughs> well, you still look boyish. It's good. You, you can wear that name now. Well, it's good but, because foundation, makeup. Well, whatever it is. I'm uh, against it. You st you're, you're, you're still pulling it off. And I don't know how old you are. I'm 62. 62. Yeah, yeah, you're pulling that off great. You're just like... You're what, you're what I'm always trying to do at this point in my life, because I'm even older than that by five years, is you just want to look generically middle-aged. Yes, late middle-aged, but just generically. You know, I don't have to... I don't know if I'd ever use the word generic. Well, I just, <laughs> as opposed to like... I might have to draw a different type of eyebrow you, you on. Wanna, <laughs> people at some point on TV get to the point where like, it, they just, I don't know, you know, it's just a distraction. And, and people don't like to look at like, old people like who look old it's just something probably depressing. well there's always filters i think men i mean obviously i don't know what what it's going to be like for me as i get older because there's the point where you can't really fill in the cracks with makeup there's a point you know bowie got it right you know in his later years he always used to wear a bit of black coal a little bit of cheek but he never went for a full Wait, foundation black coal like actual coal no like there's a coal pencil it's a black oh coal i pencil. see it's like a rock and roll like right they call man liner yeah, you can you, get away with that. You right, know, if, rock stars, you guys can do it. It would not work for me. I think you get away with a bit of guy liner. What? If I brought... Oh, no. I reckon if you brought your makeup artist in and gave you a bit of guy liner, oh, no. it, would, it would make a difference. That guy liner would crash <laughs> <laughs> into it a corner. It has porn to be like you're not trying. It has to be really smudged. No, I, I, <laughs> I can't pull that off. I mean, I... <laughs> but also, maybe you don't because want to pull it off. I mean, I, I know you probably think like most people now that sexuality is always on a sliding scale, but I feel like I'm fully heterosexual. No, I'm not sliding scale. Yeah, no, I think that I think that there's a certain point where you kind of know what you like, you know, whether it's sort of food, religion, Girls. you know, fashion. Right. Also like straight men do look at other men and, you know, they dress the same and they admire fit people, you know. Tom Brady, you know, the good looking <laughs> yes. boy at school. You know, oh, you're, you're so right about everybody Tom Brady. loves the good looking boy at school, the guy that's the, on the top of the team, you know, the best swimmer, there is gets no all the girls. That's the same. <laughs> but I think that, you know, it's kind of normal. I don't think that's weird. What's normal? Oh, to, for to, men to like, yeah. For people to say someone else is attractive regardless of whether they want to sleep with them. Right. <clears throat> you could say someone's attractive whether you want to sleep with them or not. In fact, you can say someone's attractive even if you don't want to sleep with them. 
there are people that you sort of go, yeah, you know, someone will say to you, oh, is that person attractive? You say, yeah, but I wouldn't necessarily want to cook him right. breakfast. I wouldn't right. want to, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't chase after someone like that. Right. But, you know, it's, um, I think attraction is super random. But I'll bet you you've cooked a few people breakfast. Do you know what? Not as much as you think. I'm a bit of a nun when it comes to really. really? <laughs> well, think about Why, it. So you, when kick I was, a, you kick them out before well, they. No, no, I've always been a bit of a serial relationship person. Oh, I've really? It's been a bit of a weird right. monogamous, partly because I can't be bothered. Right. Also, at this point, me going on an app, forget it. I mean, it's just all I get is, oh, you look a bit like Boy George. And then no. if they turn up at your house and you haven't warned them, you have to hide all the hats. <laughs> <laughs> Turn around all the pictures of you with the Pope and well, this one and surely you, <laughs> surely you at this point in your life have, have someone, a, hat. a hat person <laughs> who does that. Have, Charles, the hats. I think if I was, if I had my own tree house, I might go on the apps, you know, because that would be a good place I could sort of, you know. But yeah, no, I feel like that world isn't open to me, so I don't bother. Yeah, you said- And you I don't like surprises. <laughs> you said you only uh, had four hours a month or a week or whatever. What, what was it, a day <laughs> that you were gay? -o. I mean, that's not a lot of hours. Well, I think in terms of like what other people might pursue, because, you well, know, the thing about being a gay man in the public eye, you do spend a lot of your time explaining what your life is like. And my life is kind of just like yours. Well, you know what? It's so funny. You know. When we passed finally gay marriage in this country, and it had mm. failed on the ballot in states 35 times, 30, over 35, and then suddenly the Supreme Court made it the law of the land. And people saw, what they saw was gay people showing up at the courthouse to get married. And this was like a big moment for American heterosexuality. Because yeah. we saw, oh, there was like people in sweatshirts, schlubby people who looked just like Regular. Exactly. Uh, exactly. exactly. We, we're like the criminal. And so basically, the, not every gay person is well kept or groomed. You no. know, sometimes they're a little bit rough around the edges, which is more my type of thing. <laughs> 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 People are very clean these days, Bill. You know, straight men <laughs> shave everything, preen everything. They shave their asshole? I know straight men who spend longer in the bathroom than I do. If you, that's something do, you can comprehend. How do you even shave your asshole? There's new, these new great things now. Should we do an advert? But there's, I, this thing, there's, this, there's this thing. There's this new thing called Manscaped. It's like a gadget and it doesn't cut you. It's amazing. I don't mean that. I mean, what <laughs> position do you get into that you can well, like yes. see your, I guess you got to do it in the mirror. You just got to be like this in the mirror. I think so. Although there are people oh, that do so it. There are people, places you can go. I bet you you can't do it if you're if you're too heavy and out of shape. I mean, no. it's something you need to be a little limber to do. I could totally shave my asshole if I wanted. I just, it's not an attractive photograph unless you look. No, <laughs> but it does make sense that you would do that. Do people get it waxed? Brave people get it waxed. So that you then never have to. Oh no, I think it's just quick. Don't look. What? <laughs> It's got to be quick, you know? That's why the shaving is good. The electric uh. shaver. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know. I, think the, I wasn't until like, I, yeah. I met you. <laughs> Take the photograph after the hairdresser's been and all of that stuff's done. Anyway, think, my, my point is, I think health should come first, and so with waxing. It's not... But, but health and sanity. But kind of hairs on to. your body are there for a reason. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're cilia. I mean, it's very mm. important. It's like a feeler. It's like you see a little insect and it's got its antennas and shit. Yeah, but that doesn't, mean you can't, that doesn't mean you can't move things around a bit. I mean, you can, but you're, you're basically disabling one of your body's defenses. Are you against men having transplants on the hair? Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> you can grow a penis out of your head for all I care. You Nobody can, wants that, though, do they? You can do what you want. I'm just saying, I always think of the health repercussions first and I feel like that we're losing that I think that's a personal decision for the person it is going and you, through it, exactly you know. and you can make that you can say you to yourself be, I will live 10 years younger but I'd rather live it as blah whatever X people I get eat that. a certain way or you know people right. that smoke I like this painting who did this painting yes I don't know it's really cute um what art do you have? And are you an art person? You I make art, so oh, you do. I make it more than buy it. 
It kind of ended up sort of... You hang your own stuff in your house all over? I started... Yeah, kind of, yeah. Like, kind of... I do photography. I do... I do anything that's sort of to do with visuals. It excites me, you know what I mean? Words, photographs, paintings. I do portraits. I do like these quite humorous... I'm not flattering. I'm not kind. I'm not trying to sort of make you look like you look. I'm... <laughs> trying to find like you high or I don't know <laughs> having your ass shaved. Well, good luck trying to do it with me, buddy. <laughs> You've got a challenge on your hands. Yeah, just kind of you know you're trying to get the humor of a person. I think humor is uh, is important in what I do anyway. I think there's sarcasm, humor. Yeah, you always have pick that. up on things before they sort of become you know major concerns for everyone else, and it's. It's funny how that happens, but I think as a musician, you kind of, I don't know if this is even true or not, but you feel like you pick up on things before they sort of become I re- I mean, interesting I'm, to other people. I remember when you first, I mean, I'm old enough to remember the 80s, so I remember when you were first there and on the scene and like, it was uh, like people thought this, this guy is cool. They disliked you. It was cheeky and there was humor in it. And uh, I feel like the, certainly the group I hung with, which I thought was a pretty smart, hip group, they all liked it. It all worked, you know? It, it was, uh, oh God, I feel like the, you know, the song, <laughs> The Way We Were. <laughs> Memories. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was. Light the corners of my mind. That's, that's a great lyricist who did that. It was exciting to like come to America for the first time, you know? Having sort of bumped into, I remember um, the manager of that band Spandau Ballet, a guy called Steve oh, Dagger, had come up to me great. in the street and said, you know, they're playing your record in America. Mm. Do you really want to hurt me? They're playing yeah. it on like country radio or something really everywhere. random. And so, yeah, coming out here for the first time was amazing. And then, you know, sort of doing the first gig in Long Island where we walked out on stage and people actually saw us. They were horrified. What is it? <laughs> so, like, whenever I read about bands that have been around for a long time and then they write the story, the Rolling Stone or Vanity Fair or whatever, mm-hmm. but, like, they're still on the road and it's always, like, uh, harping on this idea of what they used to do on the road. And now Mick eats macrobiotic only and Keith has been a that, blood I've friend. always been that person, though. I've always been that really? person. Really? I've always. I've brought, brought macrobiotic chefs on tour. So you, <laughs> Really? Yeah. But but you never were, uh, you did drugs. Yeah. <laughs> I was the sort of person that would take ecstasy and then have some cranberry juice in the morning and think that was going to help me. You know, like, so just like, oh, like, add some oranges or eat some seeds. You know, it's that kind of. That was your drug, ecstasy? Uh, no, no. Oh. No. no, I had a few. A few drugs? Yeah, I, wanted, I was on a few. Yeah, oh, I was yeah, on heroin yeah. for a while. Oh, that was I, a, I think I read about that. That was a big one. That was, a, that, <laughs> was the, do, that was the most in, all-consuming moment. Whenever you do heroin, it makes the press. You know, like the other yeah. drugs, they're like, well, come on. He's a rock star. He's gonna well, it's it. the hell of drugs, heroin. isn't it? Heroin is the hell of drugs. But you got off heroin, huh? Mm. How, long, how long were you on heroin? About three or four years. How were those years? I don't good know, if you got, really. It was good kind if you of, got the heroin? I think it was kind of, yeah, kind of like a void, like a vo- like almost like not really a lot happened, but there was chaos. But it wasn't like, it was almost like being in a bubble, which I think that's what that stuff does. It puts you in this kind of bubble-like state where you almost forget who you are and what you're supposed to be doing, which can be quite nice. So you get hooked on horse, huh? The white lady. Yeah, exactly. And then you kind <laughs> of, uh, obviously these days it's easier to come off. Then it was like... Once you got off it, you didn't really ever want to go through that again. So, I mean, right. I've never gone back for that very reason. Just like, oh, I wouldn't want to go through that. But nowadays, I think it is easier to, not that I'm advertising. But, <laughs> no, although there, I mean, it's rare, but there have been heroin addicts who did it into older age. Uh, yeah, functioning. I, yes. Sort of, I think, uh, I think, heroin addicts are quite I think common. William S. Burroughs. The, yeah, of the, course, yeah. Right, you know who I'm talking about? The, but we loved Burroughs. Yes. Right? Yeah. There's a great photograph. Didn't of, he, wasn't he the one who... In fact, I have, I have a painting I did of Amy Winehouse and William Burroughs. Oh, wow. But it was an imaginary, it wasn't, obviously they would never have met, but I decided that they had met. Why, was she your friend? Not friends, but I was, uh, 
I saw some of myself in what she was going through. Boy, you, whenever these Janis Joplin, she, uh, Amy Winehouse, Sinead O'Connor, whenever they, I have something about, you know, young women mm -hmm. in that business and then dying. And it's like, it's sadder even than most sad. And there's a lot of sad. Yeah, definitely. With, with, well, with both of those. Well, anyone, you know, anyone that goes through that. I mean, but Sinead I worked with, so that was a different type of relationship. She also was, we're both Irish, you know, so I always loved her from the minute I set eyes on her, really, and kind of worked with her a couple of years ago. We did a cover of a Yoko Ono song called Death of Samantha on a dub record, and I got to come in, and she was hilarious, farting, burping, being completely... <laughs> I must say, no, no disrespect intended, but I've never heard the phrase cover of a Yoko Ono song. Mm. Um, Love Yoko Ono. Heard the music? Yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm not familiar, Love so I'm music. not putting it Love down. The really? Yeah, Deficit Man for his, I mean, first of all, my memory, her lyrics are in, uh, insane. I mean, I would say that a lot of my favorite singers, Dylan, Yoko, and that's a weird one, no one picks Yoko, Leonard Cohen, Lou Reed even, they had a kind of lazy approach to singing. It wasn't really, uh, you know, it wasn't necessarily, it was more about the what I have to say than what I No, the way you do. put it was perfect. Yeah. I mean, Lou Reed but, like, was such a powerful influence on Bowie and on people like me. But your music is so much more happy cool <laughs> and good and melodic, you know, more pop. And that's not an insult. No, but but then, it, I mean, Lou Reed, Lou sorry. Is, not my and Yoko Ono. Here's my own. Now, and look, I just had Julian here. You don't think Vicious is popular? Vicious. Mm -hmm. Is that he Yoko? Hit me with a flower. That's Lou. Oh, Lou. Well, you know, Barry produced um, um, Transformer. It's very poppy, that album, Lou Reed. Maybe he hated it. But Lou I, Reed. I think I, I think I do. <laughs> I, you're right. I don't, I'm not a, that familiar with what think, I heard. I think Melody and, played a big part in all of those people. You know where I, I still you know, love them. You know what we all know um, Yoko Ono from is John's last album, um, Double Fantasy, right? But check and, out my version of Death of Samantha, which is a beautiful Yoko okay, Ono song. I, I don't say that as a self promotion. I will. At all. No, we're but, all. But you know, to, the lyrics are love, amazing. I love self promotion. People say I'm cool, I'm a cool chick baby. Like, you have to listen to it. Lyrics mean nothing to me if I don't like the song. And what about I, if you don't like the person? <laughs> 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 what about if you can't even get to the song because you hate the person more than the song? Uh, I'm nice. interested because I can That's like a great. song and like an artist without having to like the artist. I've had a few of those but, encounters in my life with people that I loved that was were disappointed when I met them a little bit, like, mm. yeah. But still, I was right. able to go, oh yeah, but I still love the music. John Lennon, like, famously, okay, moved to New York in 1970 when the Beatles broke up. Never saw his homeland again for the last ten years of his life. Like, was just <clears throat> for the first five years he was making albums, but his heart wasn't in it. He had some few good things, but. And then in 1975, he like withdrew, didn't do anything. That was when he, that song, Watching the Wheels, I'm sitting and everybody says, I'm crazy, I'm lazy, I'm just lying in bed. But, and then finally, <clears throat> he kind of came out of that at the end of the decade and he put out the album Double Fantasy with the awesome single starting over. Phil Spector, Wall of Sound, Excuse Me, I Love Pop Music. So, and come on, that song started. No, it's amazing. Okay. But intention is everything. <laughs> intention is everything. You know, your vibe. I know. Is where you are. So that's a far. That's far from Lou Reed. That not that far. Really. I watched this thing with Lou Reed recently. I it's, wish I could post it to you. I don't have my phone. Where a journalist said to Lou Reed, "Are you homosexual or transsexual?" And he goes, "Sometimes." Yeah. And he goes, "He goes, <laughs> which one are you more?" And he goes, "Why does it matter?" Right. And I thought, that's why I love Lou Reed, because yeah. he doesn't give a shit. Well, I'm sure and I Rock could... and roll isn't supposed to give a shit. I'm sure I would love his... his... <laughs> I would love Pop his... Pop isn't supposed to give a shit either. Lyrics, really. but I have to like the song. I mean, I'm just a fan. I'm not, I have no musical ability. I can make you a playlist, a Yoko yes. playlist. Slip a song in here okay, and there. But if I just... I'll... <laughs> that album, 
his comeback album right before he died. It was on the charts as he was assassinated. I remember, of course. Okay, he had a bunch of great new songs. Woman, I mean, it was really great Lennon stuff. Interspersed with a Yoko song, and this is back when you had to play it as a record, mm -hmm. spinning around. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so it wasn't that hard. Though, we was all it? were a little <laughs> pissed off that we had to keep getting up and moving the needle because we didn't want to listen to the Yoko. We tried it. Maybe it's great, and it's us who's not worthy. But that's what she has. A, she has an album <clears throat> called Rising, right? If you want to kind of experience a kind of nice piece of kind of collective Yoko work. That album, Rising, is great. Trust Look, me. On your recommendation, trust me. I am going to give, I give everybody a chance. You're right. I don't know it well enough. I know it for, I know I don't like the stuff that was on Double Fantasy. But <clears throat> I, I've covered two songs by Yoko, Death of Samantha and another one called New York Woman. New York Woman. <laughs> well, I think we've all. Total punk rock. We've all heard New this. York Woman. It's, it's great. <laughs> I think it's just, we've all. It's just words and melodies. <laughs> Wait, I got a joke for you. <laughs> I think we've all heard the phrase three chord song, right? That's my favorite. Okay. We have rounds about this all the time. You know what Yoko? You know what Yoko says? Well, you have three. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that joke before. But I had this. We had this argument at the beginning of the tour. We were on the tour. Me and guitarist Roy started arguing about. A particular song I loved, and he was like, "It's got three chords." I said, "All right, let's list all the songs that have ever been number one that have three chords. There are hundreds of them, but thousands." I, I feel like every—I mean, it's amazing to me, honestly, when I listen to new music, which I try to do all the time. It's sometimes—it's not new now; it's new to me. But like, how can there be new songs? There's only so many notes and so many chords, and how the fuck? Could there ever be a new song is what I think, especially when I hear a good also, one. Also, how could there never be a new song? That's an interesting question because, I mean, how could, every how, song is related. But but just musically, how could every variation of the finite number of notes think, have, you, have not already been done? No, because done? I think everything is familiar. All the things you love sound like things you already love. It's like good food. You know, like, if it's something familiar, it's in a rock and roll style, or it's in a Beatles style, or whatever, a jazz style. Let's get back to shaving your <laughs> asshole. <laughs> That's definitely not true. <laughs> Club Random is brought to you by the audio marketing gurus at Radioactive Media. Let me ask you, what are you doing to grow your business? Don't just use Google and social media when you can utilize new channels and acquire new customers by partnering with shows like mine and enjoy lower CPMs elevating your brand in a space away from your competitors. Wouldn't you like to generate up to nine times more leads? You can when you combine the power of audio and video channels with text messaging and generate a higher ROI. Club Random has been partnering with Radioactive Media since the beginning with clients such as Signal Wire, Heat Holders, Wine Enthusiast, Lumi, Microdose, Gummies, and more. For a limited time, get $1,000 toward your first campaign, plus free text messaging by going to radioactivemedia.com or text the word RANDOM to 511511. Discover how audio marketing can suppress your current, can surpass <laughs> your current strategies with new and innovative ways that sound better. Go to radioactivemedia.com or text RANDOM to 511511. Text RANDOM to 511511 today. Terms, conditions, message, and data rates may apply. Watching football is fun, but it's better with Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a skill based, real money daily fantasy sports game. How does it work? You pick just two to six players and whether they'll go over or under their Prize Picks projection. And it's not just football, it's any sport. At Prize Picks, you aren't competing against other people, it's just you versus the projections. Prize Picks offers an easy deposit and withdrawal experience. And there are fun wagers all over the board. For example, today I placed a bet on how soon Taylor Swift writes a new song about how much she can't stand Travis Kelsey. Don't get mad at me, Swifties. You know this isn't going to end well. But here's an example of a real bet you can place. Christian McCaffrey, under 89 yards rushing. Tua, over 280 yards passing. Or 
Debo Samuel over 50 yards receiving. Prize picks adds a ton of excitement to the sports viewing experience. Watch your progress update in real time. Prize picks offers frequent discounts, bonuses, and other exciting offers. They can even pick in game projections after a game is started, which includes halves, quarters, periods, and more. Go to prizepicks.com slash random and use code random for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash random and use code random for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. There are a couple of ways to start having better sex. One, you could sign up for an online course, which gives new meaning to who do I have to blow to get an A? Or the better way to get started is to go to adamandeve.com. Adam and Eve is offering 50% off just about any item, plus free shipping, which includes rush processing. Doesn't matter how much you spend or what you buy, all will be packaged and sent discreetly for free and fast. Better sex is just a click away. Bring more pleasure and satisfaction into your bedroom. Just go to adamandeve.com and select any one item. Just enter offer code RANDOM at checkout. That's RANDOM, R-A-N-D-O-M, at adamandeve.com. This is an exclusive offer specific to this podcast, so be sure to use this code RANDOM to get your discount. 100% free shipping and get it fast with rush processing code RANDOM. (laughs) <laughs> I know people in the music industry, and a lot of them are... Now you're starting off. <laughs> <laughs> ...are bitter. Uh, especially, I'm talking about the younger ones, because they came along at a time when, uh, you know, you can have a giant record, and it's Spotify pays you one trillionth of a cent every time it's played. No, that's the Taylor Swift. Is that, right. is, that not, <laughs> is that not true? Oh, I, don't know. I don't know really. I think that... Come on. You must follow this. You want not your... really. I mean, <clears throat> I make my living from live work, from being in the well, moment. Well, that's the point. You yeah. have to because, yeah. you know, people... When you come out in the 80s, you didn't... The records made money for you yeah. because people bought actual records and the more they actually bought, the more you got. I know that's horrible, stupid capitalism, but it seemed to have worked better. <laughs> hey, money's this, okay. Money's, in, bought, money's bought a dirty thing. <laughs> the music industry, I mean, come on. You must have uh, seen like a big change. Well, it's when always you, been run by people who don't make music. So that's the interesting, you know what I mean? It's run by people that right. really never written a song, of course, never considered it, right. <laughs> and they're judging you. And that's fascinating when, you know, if someone starts telling you about what you're doing musically and you're like, well, you're missing the point. I'm not doing it for that reason. Right. I haven't got an agenda. Right. But if I have, it changes daily. Right. You know, the message for me is, I, I see that you steer clear of any sort of self-promotions. <laughs> 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 Talking about himself too much, so move on. I feel like, I mean, it's, you know, what is the message of music? Music is communication. It's telling people, like, right. how you see the world, not necessarily right. a spot-on depiction of what's going on. Yes. It's what you see and what you feel. Well, it's interesting. There's different kinds of songs. There's a kind of song where you just make up a character. I mean, Paul McCartney's the master. The Gene that. Genie. The Gene Genie. In or, my case, the Diamond Chameleon. Who's yes, that? or Eleanor Rigby, or, you know, Desmond has a barrow. Who is he? Desmond, we're telling you a story. Jojo is a man. <laughs> Who? Whatever. It's just a story. That's not my favorite kind of song, although, again, if I love the song. But what if you knew the that lyrics? Well, if the lyrics are nothing, like Get Back, I was quoting it a minute ago. Uh, I mean, the lyrics, it's just gobbledygook. But so is kind of Chameleon, in a way. Yeah. But it's gobbledygook. And I don't mind. It's I love, abstract gobbledygook yeah. about something but I like that. But I like the song, so I don't care. Yeah. That's, that's the important thing. But I think that's generally what everyone feels. It's like you can get into analyzing everything, like no, but what do people some, mean. But then there's another genre of lyrics, which I think you're quite good at, which is um, life philosophy. I think I'm getting better. Yeah, because you're older, <laughs> of course, especially at that. It's life philosophy. Well, I also explore words more now. So I used to be a bit lazy around words and, and thinking. You know, I used to have a very rigid way of looking at thinking. And now I'm kind of more, that sounds ridiculous, expansive. I'm kind of just more open to but you're, letting things influence me, admitting that I want to sound a certain way and 
not denying the sort of Bowie and what yeah. I do or the Beatles or just not saying, well, as everything already exists. That's the thing. I yes, think you but, just but you are that. in your, I feel like in your lyrics now, you are, especially now, you are like sharing your life philosophy. You're almost like giving advice, which is almost like the, Inevitable. Don't listen to me, though, is the when underlying you get, message. <laughs> when you get to our age, it's almost inevitable that you're always doing that. Well, but maybe I'm doing it for myself because I think sometimes I need post-it notes to remind myself not to fall back into behaving in a way I might have done 20 years ago or thinking in a way I might have done last week. You know, I'm always looking yeah. to change my point of view about everything all the time. No, I'm telling you, I, <laughs> I'm trying to give you a compliment. No, no, I'm I like, taking it. I like I'm it better it. because... Not, do you feel like I'm defensive? No, not, I'm, I'm not at all. I love you. I'm not defensive no. at all. I try, you know, it's no, no. one of the things I really hate. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, there's a lot of things you can choose to write a song about. When you're young, it's a lot about love and like, oh my gosh, I'm so in love with you. And I just, if I mentioned I that just, I was sitting in your man cave with, with Bill, yeah, you'd get a kick out of that. If it was a lyric, yeah, oh, a very big kick, yeah, sort of thing. So really, you know, these but characters. But you could write about a million things. Yes, you can write about puppy love, or you could write about, you know. I got all the bling and... <laughs> I've got a song called Sweet Billionaire. Now, who would write that? Why? You know, Sweet Billionaire. No one really would even put those two words together. <laughs> right. You know that only a handful of people are going to ever buy it, but it'd be interesting. Well, it can be a sweet billionaire. Sweet billionaire. I don't think there's any billionaires who are No one corrupted. ever said before. <laughs> back, get back a rack in there. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've heard a little Bert uh, back oh, around. Love Bert back around. Yeah, I can tell. And um, the simplicity of that writing. You love reggae. I like reggae as well. And also, anything can be reggae within reason. Like but any it has, big but it has hit. has that undertone a lot. But anything, it's just basically life, but looser. It's just like, you yeah. know, it's like red, red. Mm. Right. It's looser. It's red, red wine, but That's it's, a great you know, one. I, he wrote, Neil Diamond wrote that. Neil Diamond, Diamond wrote, didn't you write Red Red Wine? I don't think so. I think Neil Diamond did. Google it. Do you have a phone? No. <laughs> I think it was. I think it was Neil Diamond. We'll find out later. But it became a massive reggae hit. It just doesn't sound like. Something. I think I'm right. I, I think. What you, do I get I, for I, being I, right? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Diamond wrote some amazing songs. Who? Neil Diamond. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Right. Oh, you like me on that? Yeah, of course. Why not? How would I not? Exactly. Sweet. I don't, but you know why? I don't like. <laughs> and it's not really anything I don't like. Why? You know why? Because people are fucking snobs. That's why. I remember seeing like Glenn Campbell on the TV in England. He I called mean, me a fag. Right, one morning Glenn. he was on TV with Donny Osman. <laughs> Glenn Campbell, like Glenn one of my. Glenn Campbell. Glenn Campbell, one that, of my. Oh Glenn my Campbell, one of my heroes. <laughs> I'm watching TV. He's on TV with. Tony Osman, <laughs> and he called me, I've called me a queer or a fact, something like that. On TV? They, on TV. They, they aired it? They did air it, yeah. Yeah, because it was like 1970. But I was like, no, it was in the 80s, but I 80s, was like okay. afterwards, I was like, it doesn't change what? how I feel about which to line, man. Well, exactly. By the time it gets I, to Phoenix. I feel the same way. It doesn't change anything for Not me. Not at That's all. That's separate. And and Donnie, bless him, stood up for me. Donnie was like, and he did, can't I say bet that. You didn't, he didn't, I didn't mean anything by it. I don't care anyway. He's a red, exactly. No, but I think that's the thing I didn't right. care. Hey, I don't, I, care don't about, care. I don't care about R. Kelly. People have said, how can you play them? I'm like, the record didn't rape anybody. Oh, yeah, the record's a different thing, I think, always. And I think, like, when I met Morrissey, he was a bitch to me. But I still loved him. Right, he's a... Gemini with a Scorpio moon. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I was going to say, but, like... Is that but it's what, what you thought, like? though, right? Well, I, no, because I don't believe in astrology, but I, I'm... Well, that's to you, though. I'm getting... such a, an Aquarian. But what is that? What is that? Saturday prayer with the Taurus moon. <laughs> <laughs> Did I Google you? Yes. <laughs> but what it, what it, whatever you said he is, what is that shorthand for? Well, Gemini is, is me, so he's, like, very me, like, he's a twin. So he's a Gemini, born on the, the Gemini. But sun. what is the Gemini characteristic? We can love and hate you in the same breath. Let's just put it like that. Well, I believe that. We can have a good time and a bad time at the same time. So people call Gemini's <laughs> Two Face. Well, oh, like a country song. Is that the Gemini? Well, like a blues lyric. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I killed my wife today, but I'm still happy. That's a Gemini. Okay? That's a Gemini. <laughs> 
Oh. <laughs> I killed my wife today, my dog died, and I'm paying for the funeral. That's Gemini. I see. So the Janus, the two face. Two. I mean, it's not two face. Not that. two face, but like ability two, to see both sides of the situation. Both sides. So I've got friends in my life that. See, I feel like then that should be me. I feel that. like that's what I do. I see both sides. Yeah, I think that. Um, <clears throat> That thing of like, I've got but friends in my life. I'm not near that. I'm, I'm January. I'm writing a book right now. I'm not plugging it because it's gonna. I don't think it's ever gonna get written. But I'm writing about a friend of mine who I love dearly. But Plug I also, it, sweetheart. I also yeah. can't even stand this person. And it's so funny because I'm like trying to explain to the reader that I really do love this person. I know it doesn't sound like it. Right. <laughs> yeah. The guy no, born but... on the same day as Donald Trump, June 14. Boom. Oh. <laughs> uh... <laughs> And Che Guevara, so, if that helps. Che Guevara, does that help? He was June 14th as well. And a psychotic killer. I always say yeah. that on stage. I say, you know, I was one on the same day as Donald Trump. And it gets a kind of silence and they go, and I've got a cancer moon. And I only say it just to be playful, not to really be... Uh, I want people to know that I'm watching what's going on, but without sort of really having too much to say about it. Do you know that Che Guevara <laughs> is not a hero? No. Because, uh, like, uh, uh, the woke people who are wearing, like, Che Guevara T-shirts, they think he's this great revolutionary who, you know, was, he's was terribly racist. He he's checks his er, every box that they hate. I didn't choose to be born on the same test. <laughs> <laughs> but it's edgy. But you really That's do the, think that that affects your, your life the day you were born? It has could. It has to. It has to. Ha, what is it? it certainly doesn't have to. I think it has to. Because if you accept, like... I don't know, you want to get me to, like, I was watching this little ladybird flying off my friend's finger yesterday with such a kind of, like, <sighs> and that's the stuff you miss, right? There's so much about life that you miss. Why wouldn't the time you're born, the moon, the tides, all of those things, why wouldn't they affect you? Who do you think I am, fucking Barbara Walters? <laughs> what are you Barbara talking? Windsor. <laughs> Wait, who's, who's that? I don't know, Barbara Bush. <laughs> I just tried... It's hard to... Papa okay. Streisand. So, Papa Streisand. Wait, you got a... What Papa on your, You're looking at what a, hum, Listen, let a me hummingbird on your I was head? watching... No, lady, little ladybird. The way it flew off. You know, What's a we ladybird? You mean like, a butterfly? Lady, no, they're little, they're little red things with black spots. Little ladybird. Ladybug. Lady, oh, we call them ladybirds. Really? Your ladybird is our ladybug. Yeah, look at Boy. this. This is this, this the show that keeps yeah. on doing. I think there's hope for our two nations to make peace. Uh, I've always been loved here. So I've always kind of like... You are beloved. I feel here. like, I say this a lot on stage, I feel like the reason why I don't annoy people is because they can send me home. You they are, can send me home. <laughs> you are beloved here. I beloved you. I have to have an O1 <laughs> visa to be here. So I'm... <clears throat> it's, being here isn't easy. You know, it's, uh, it's interesting. I always get stopped. I always have to go well, through being seconds. here is easy. Oh, but... here, here is, is the breeze. Once you feel customs, <laughs> everything's like being in Bill Moss <laughs> But actually, I think that, um, yeah, no, it's not easy to be in America, but I love it here. It's really do. You do love it here. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm so glad to hear Why it. would I come? Right. If I didn't love it. It's a funny, it's just an interesting how, how story. Many, so, many, but listen, about, I did community service in New York years ago. I was made to sweep the streets and all of that. Seriously? It. Yeah, do you not remember that? It was the big. What, what'd you do? Have heroin? Uh, it was a drug thing. It was a drug thing. Anyway. It cares about the detail, but the fact is, I was no public I was, bathrooms though. I was right? sent, no, 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 no. But I was sent <laughs> back to England. Obviously, once I got, you know, the charge and all the rest, of it, I got sent back to England, and I could have not come back. Part of me was, you know, I was off my nut, and I was like, I'm never going back to America. I'm not going to go and do this and right. Amelia. And my mum, bless her, she was like, "You're not going to think like that next year or next week or next month. You know, you love America, and they love you, and you have amazing gigs there. Go back." Wow. Do you know what I mean? So my mom, my mom's gone now, but I know. I I mean, to this year, I'm, I remember that song in your Broadway show about your mother. I you always like, knew, didn't you, mother? Yeah, that thing. You you know, going back to my childhood, you are breezing along, and suddenly you get to about six or seven, <laughs> and suddenly everybody wants to know what you are, what do you like? Do you like playing soldiers, <laughs> or do you prefer pop music? You know, is it Shirley Bassey that rattles your kitschkas? Is it? Is it, you know... Shirley Bassey, was that was the sign you're getting? My opening line in my book was, when I was a little boy, I wanted to be Shirley Bassey. Who, there was I, something about her... Yeah, I wanted to get with Shirley Bassey. But I don't think it's too simple to say, is it the mother? You know, my, I think watching the way my mother was treated by my dad and the way society treated women back then, 
you know, I think, you know, as a, as a young gay kid, you kind of get an interesting perspective on life, you know, but I'm not your typical person. You know, I'm a Gemini. I don't really hold on to shit. No. I'm not wound. I mean, I obviously, I'm seriously damaged by my childhood, I admit it. <laughs> <laughs> but not at this point. There was a point, like, after so, like, the third court case, I had to sort of take some responsibility so, for who I, who I was choosing to be, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Not to cut you off, because no, you are so interesting, but I, want, <laughs> but I want to ask you about Shirley Bassey. Shirley Bassey. Was, because this is something we sort of have in common, because I also like Shirley Bassey, but not, I didn't want to be her. No. I wanted to be Well, no, I think, that it's, it's, I'll make it as simple. It was strong <laughs> women. So my mum, in essence, was this incredible Aquarian, creative, beautiful, beautiful, free, colourful soul. And my dad kind of suppressed it. So women that were like, you know, like Joan Collins putting out a cigarette and a plate of prawns. <laughs> you know, just women that were like, fuck you, men. <laughs> fuck you, society. You know, anyone that sort of was, right. you know, Gladys Knight, you know, all of those songs. It was like, right. it's kind of... Why I was idolized, idealizing my parents' marriage. Why can't it be like this? Why can't it be like a Four Tops song? Or, you know, just wallowing a bit in that kind of right. sadness that I thought my mum was going through as a kid. So, you know. You know that Gladys Knight was a lot older than we all thought she was, I think, when she was at her heyday, because you, know, you can, maybe you should fact check this, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure I read that she won the Major Bose Comedy Hour, which was like one of the first television shows. That's nice. Oh, with the singing, though, not for comedy. Like as a teenager. Oh, right. She, it, it was kind of like that era's... Um, Star it, Search or something. Yes, yeah. or what they, you know, The Voice, those kind of shows. Yeah, yeah, I was on that. <laughs> and I think that was 1948. Wow, amazing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but she also introduced, uh, there was this, uh, this guy, Jabriyev, that was this sort of Bowie, you know, trying to be America's Bowie. Morrissey's obsessed with him, this guy Jabriyev. Yeah, he was like a sort of America's Ziggy Stardust, but he was very out. He not was Jamir was, Not Jamiroquai. No, Jabriyev. Okay. And there's a show where I saw Gladys Knight introducing Jabriyev, saying he's the next big thing and so mad because, you know, I don't know who he was except for Morrissey was like, oh, you know who Jabriath is? It's kind of been crazy. Yeah, look him up. Might be interesting. Jabriath? Jabriath. I didn't, I've never heard of Jabriath. Yeah. Not many people have. Oh. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> Why would fans, I? <laughs> well, because you're a cultural man. Wow, I don't dig that deep. Like, I'm telling like, you, kind of, I, I am like a perfect, uh, like, focus group for a musician because, again, no musical talent but I do know what I like. I cultivate my music collection very carefully. It's important in my life. I use the old iPod for that reason because there are things I can do on that one that I couldn't but You're with, with someone who knows a lot about music. That's me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, you're making music for me. Yeah, I'm making like music. A lot of I think essentially for months. I'm not making it for the radio, that's for sure. You know, but right. if it ends up there, good. I mean, who, when was the last year I listened to the radio? No, but well, that's interesting, isn't it? Like, you know, because people get to experience things in a quite nonchalant yeah. way. When we were teenagers, like, what record you had under your arm was life or death. Right. No, I mean, it's like, it could there, change, but it was important. There's you know? no way somebody 62 years old is going to be able to capture the market that the people in their 20s and early 30s do, because that's where music is. It's where the energy is. I disagree. That's what's on the <laughs> charts. But look at Kate it's, Bush. Kate Bush just came back with massive swell. Kate it wasn't Bush. an age. Kate Bush at this moment, because the perfect, um, what's that? There was a TV show on Netflix, like Stranger Things. Okay. Kate Bush. I mean, went back to number yeah, one. Okay. So it's, it's always an exception. It's a myth, though, this kind of age gap no, thing. Oh, if, you can't like something no, if you're 16. Okay, let me finish the point. If you look at the charts, <laughs> I'm telling you, all the songs will be. You're talking about the system. You're talking about the matrix. That's I'm different. not talking about anything because you don't let me finish. <laughs> uh, if, because music is something, it hit me when I was 12. That's when it hits you hardest. And, and then it, it's. You could put out the greatest music in the world when you're, I mean, I remember Paul McCartney had an album out when he was 47, Flowers in the Dirt. Amazing record, could have been just like any Beatles album. 
they would just, when you're 47, they're just not going to listen to it. They're not going to promote well, it. And more, anyone who's buying records is not going to care because they have to have their own music. That's a bit of a myth, but whatever. But you can Let still make it. great music. <laughs> You just have I to. I think you have to exist out of all outside of all of those things we just you know talked about. You have to kind of just find a reason to do what you do that's satisfying to yourself, and you know. Uh, but you hope that something every so often clicks. Okay, but what I'm saying is you like, are cynical though. I'm not. I'm not cynical. I'm not cynical. I'm just yeah. like a a what do you call it? A, a difficult cynical. customer. Cynical. Like a, I'm a customer <laughs> of music. <laughs> I'm the customer. Ooh. So I want like something that when I buy it satisfies me. And that's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not going to listen to this. I don't have these. an issue supplying that though. Because your music is commercial. I have got commercial genes, I think, yeah. Yes. But what's commercial? Commercial is just a catchy chorus and the rest of it is where the depth comes. I mean, not every song even has to have a chorus and be catchy. You know what? Maggie May. Rod Stewart. Very good, yeah. And also, There's if you no want chorus. me to, and if you want me to stay by Sly and the Family Stone, no chorus. What is? If you want me to stay, I'll be around the day. I don't day. know what that is. Sly and the Family Stone. What's the name of it? Sly and the Family Stone. If no, you what's want the name me of to, it? The song is good. If you, you, you know it. When you hear the bass line, uh -oh. you will know that song. Otherwise, where have you been living? I thought I knew all the <laughs> Sly and the Family Stone songs. That's when I was a teenager. That's when I paid yeah. a special attention every week. I wrote down the survey every so week. I, I heard that when I was a punk rocker. So it was like kind of, I wasn't really what I was listening to, but that, suddenly I, it was like. I, well, I don't think that was one of their hits, because I certainly would know that. Oh, it's one of the most famous. What's it called? If you want me to stay, I'll be around today to be available for you to see. This is Sly and the Family Stone? Sly and Stone, yeah. It's on, it's on, what's the album? It's on that album. Wow. It's like a sort of. I think oh. it's a deep cut. No, it's not. It, it's like one of the most famous. Ask any bass player in the planet. Okay, bass players, again, not the public. <laughs> I'm the public. That's what I'm Ask trying to tell musician, you. any musician, if they know I'm that song, I'd be very surprised. John Q. Public. I'm the young man in the 22nd row who sees you as something more than sexual. Not you in particular, you but... such an Aquarian. It's genius. I am, I am half an Aquarian. <laughs> That's, did you know that? Yeah, I Googled you. Uh, <laughs> I went online and I was but like... I'm on the cusp. They told me down to the minute wow. with, Cap <laughs> with Capricorn. So you, a minute ago, you didn't care about Star Sons. Now you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you kind of, yeah. But but what's interesting is you can do that thing when, when anyone asks you, you ask, I always ask everyone in a star sign, just pull a face, whatever they say. <laughs> if they say like, Eric, just go, kind of, oh, like, and they always think you know something really important about their destiny, which it's a great party game, you know. But how does my being on the cusp of Aquarius and Capricorn, do you think? Well, I think if you think about the concepts of being on the cusp of anything, it just has a, <laughs> has a kind of energy. Do you not well, think? Well, cusp, could, it's well, very cuspy. How is Bill? He's cuspy. Yeah. Don't you think? That's like well, cynicism. Being on the cusp, I think, is one of those things, and you'll appreciate this with the thing, split both personality, sides, is, two hats. can be very painful or can be very pleasurable. Yeah. You can be sitting. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're always back to this fucking Harry Balls thing. Let it well, go. Yeah. I mean, you can be riding a cock, and I would imagine as a woman that feels pretty, pretty good, I'll try it one day. Um, I mean, I could, could answer that. Or you could I, be I, sitting on something, <laughs> you know, you could be on the train. And there's something, yeah, but if you like on, something, it's something always pleasurable. If you like something, it's pleasurable. <laughs> And sometimes you have to, some, there's a saying, if you don't like it, try it, you might like it. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a new catchphrase. That's, that's a t-shirt. <laughs> if you don't like it, try it. I'm you just saying, like if you're going to sit on something, make it something you like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the Homo best. as in love of self. I mean, yeah. homo eroticus. Well, I mean, you know. Interesting. Homo, one of the few roots that has two meanings. It means man. Like EC Homo, behold the man, mm -hmm. and it also means same. So homosexuality, homo, it's funny. Same self love. It, well, it were no, it means well, no. I'm just it doesn't. It doesn't <laughs> I'm a lyricist. It doesn't mean <laughs> self love. It means love of man, love mm -hmm. of other man. Well, you are a man, so it is loving self.
Did you know most of the shampoo out there that you're using is actually terrible for your scalp, stripping valuable oils and blocking the sebaceous glands? Not sure what those glands are, but they sure sound important. Regular shampoo has harsh chemicals and detergents that are literally wreaking havoc on your scalp, making it so bad that if your hair could talk, it would say, help, I'm being poisoned. Fortunately, now there are Neil naturopathic products with no harsh chemicals and detergents. Just 100% natural ingredients that provide nutrition and healing for the scalp, roots, and hair. I know, because I use it every time I wash my hair. And trust me, I save anything harsh for my lungs. <laughs> Neil naturopathic products have been formulated by a holistic naturopath with 40 years experience and are made in small batches here in Los Angeles. Neil naturopathic has everything you've been looking for to make your hair grow stronger and healthier. Neil naturopathic shampoos, conditioners, hair, and scalp oils, along with their accessories, are a game changer and leader in raising the caliber of your hair health. You can find them at neilnaturopathic.com. That's N-E-I-L, naturopathic.com. And for Club Random fans, they have a 15% discount on your first order. Use code BILL15 and feed your scalp and hair. That's BILL15, really. I use it, I think it's doing pretty good. Check out neilnaturopathic.com. I was on stage in San Francisco when they first legalized marijuana, doing a gig with Coach Club, it was hilarious. And what I'm year so, is this? I was just like, I can't remember what it was years ago. I was in San Francisco <laughs> and I was singing. And about, half, about halfway through the gig, I looked at Mikey and I went, I'm high. I said, I'm absolutely stoned. And I was laughing from, my head from off. From what was in the audience? Yeah, they were just, well, I mean, they were like, you know, Really, you got a You're really close. You got a contact high? Yeah. I couldn't get a contact high if I prayed. Yeah, but that's because you're like hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the cops. <laughs> I'm not the cops. You're so right. What do I give a shit? <laughs> I give a shit what I think. What do I care if you think I Don't hard. explain yourself to me, man. That's like exactly. the whole thrill right. of being high, isn't it? That you don't have to kind of, right. you know, think on the same level as everyone else. I've known you an hour and I'm apologizing. What is this? Well, you're, you're turning British, you see. <laughs> right. Because we say sorry for everything. Right. So sorry it's raining. But I feel like I've known you my whole life. Yeah, I think that's. Uh, it's, I always wanted. I didn't think I was going to find you weird. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, weird is a and talk sort of, of certain words. Talk about a spectrum. Yeah, I weirdness don't know. is a spectrum because everyone is weird in their own way. Everyone is, almost everyone is corrupt in their own way. Oh man, you know, I mean, being a human is to be is a hypoc being a hypocrite. I mean, just opening well, your mouth. I mean, there are definitely some people are definitely better than other people. Some people are more altruistic. Better in what way, though? Like more self, more selfless. Like, wouldn't do sketchy, <laughs> shady, shitty things. Hello. But then Better. you also love people that do sketchy, shitty, sh shady things. Well, you love something about them. I, don't, I certainly wouldn't love them. Oh, you wouldn't invite them over for tea or something important, but... No, usually sex. Usually what people... Isn't that interesting, though? <laughs> Isn't well, that interesting? Well, it's true. I mean, <laughs> usually what gets you to forgive uh, otherwise heinous personality <laughs> flaws is you like the dick or the pussy. You just you And do like you like it. arrogant people? Do you get turned on by, say, uh, you're into women, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Don't be defensive. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I admit it. Hey, are you I'm into women, yeah? I'm a flaming hope heterosexual. You're into women. No, but listen, you yeah. know. And, and Can I, I have... say something in defense of heterosexuals? Yes. Very important. Yes. Two of them made me. Right. That's their genius. We are important. <laughs> we have done many so things. So much. Absolutely. Well, of course. Everyone's important. Everything's important. I observe as a Brit, you know, because obviously, listen, look at our lot. If you want to, you know, we're not judging anything here, but look at right. our lot. Our lot we, the last three prime ministers, no, I don't think anyone voted for them. They just turned up. Oh, over. please. You should, you should be so uh, unlucky. All your prime ministers, yeah, Theresa May. What a, what a crazy person. You know, yes, no, not but, everybody, but, but not everybody so, succeeds at the job, but nothing is like what's going on in here, where you have like a true crazy, stupid person. You, your people are all reasonable. You may not like every policy. Mm -hmm. That's life. You don't get every win, but they're just, they don't scare you. Did any of those people scare you? 
Does mm. Rishi Sunak scare you? He doesn't scare me. None of them scare I would be careful what I say about him, but, you know, uh, Boris baffled me. He doesn't... Boris was just... He, what? <laughs> if anybody was going to scare you, it would be him. But Boris even, was even he's not, not scary. scary. Just, no, not scary, but just like... The British are just much more mature. So even when they're buffoons like Boris, <laughs> it's not as scary. Like, Trump is a true buffoon. You know, like... So you don't like him? <laughs> I read that about you. Don't be defensive. No. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, no, but fascinating, though, in a weird sort of way. The whole, well, because we do it in a slightly different way in our country. So just this whole thing. I was watching the other night um, this thing. I mean, obviously, I skip around the channels because I know that, you know, you don't want to sort of be stuck in one thought pattern all the time. It's quite good to go. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, that's whatever. Kind of like a mad opera. <laughs> I feel like I should write well, an opera about it. Well, opera singers wear less makeup. <laughs> <laughs> That's the major difference. I mean, there is something kind of quite interesting about the whole thing. Like it's like quite interesting. Yes, yeah. interesting. I'll give you, I think but also quite, frightening. Frightening. But well, also it, from both angles, because first of all. All these crimes he's committed, of, of course he did them. He's Donald Trump. He's a criminal. He does criminal things without even caring or really knowing because he's a crazy person who doesn't even see it. You love him. So, <laughs> so he, of course he's committed these crimes, but we are, and, and he should be prosecuted. But by doing so, we are crossing this Rubicon, but we never did in this country. Well, my manager, PK, says it's bad for the brand of president. It's just not a good look. <laughs> Why rock stars ever like, and so many of them do, kill themselves and they're suicidal? I'm, get, I'm, I'm of course there are things that go on in the brain that we absolutely, can't do. yeah. But like from the outside, it just looks like wow, you have all the things everyone is like pining for, and it's and and you're the one who's unhappy, Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> you're Elvis. Yeah, just, I mean, you know, it isn't that is an interesting question, but. Yeah. I don't know. I think when, no, you're, when you're an artist, you kind of work that stuff out in public. That's the difference. Right. Like if you're not, I mean, listen, nowadays, obviously, everyone's got their windows wide open because you've got the internet. So I'm that's just, changed everything. But I'm just I mean? saying, why is there something to work out? <laughs> you know, you're, Jesus uh, Parents, blessed you childhood. when you were born with incredible talent, which most mm. people don't have. Great look. They didn't tell me Every, at that point. They didn't say, had, guess what, kid? Don't worry about the whole school thing and being beaten up for being gay because you're going to become a fucking huge rock star. Well, I might have acted differently had I had some information. All right, let me ask you a tough question. <laughs> if you ha <laughs> your life, you, you live your life as a rock star mm. and you got beaten up for being gay. Mm. That's horrible and it's wrong. Mm. If, knowing what you know now, you can, you can go I can already tell you I would choose again, 1,000%. You would choose what happened? I didn't choose it, but... But you would, you would choose... I didn't choose it, but I... You know, that's the wrong word, because I didn't choose to be who I am, but, you know, I accept it. And but it if just... You, if so, I, you know, it makes me read the room slightly different to everyone else. But if else. the question is, you can go back in time, <clears throat> and you will get beaten up for five years, but then you'll be a rock star for life. Or I can spare you getting beaten up, and you will work at Kinney Shoes. <laughs> Which would you take? Oh, the first option. Mr. <laughs> George, the first option. I put it to you. <laughs> the first, Answer the question, the sir. The first option, of course. I mean, you know, the thing is also, life isn't linear, and you don't remember things in right. order of when they happen. Also, it's good to go through some pain when you're young. But you get better lyrics, that's for sure. I mean, <laughs> One of the I good things about ex-lovers is you can turn them into songs. Profitable, big, number one songs. Right. Yes, <laughs> Take you your pain global. Yes. You know. Um, it's it's got to be a sweet kind of let revenge. Let me turn you into a song. You know, right. and also, interestingly, you know, I remember years ago singing a song I'd written about a partner to, the, to him in bed, and he just looked at me and he went, that's about you. <laughs> wow. And I was like, he's right. Wow. Son of a bitch. <laughs> What a queen, huh? I know. He wasn't even a queen either. He was just like, he wasn't even like, he wasn't even being arch, Bill. He was just, From, you think that everything goes out the window once, though. Not everything. And I think when you're younger, you're more susceptible. Are you a lights on or lights off person? What happened? Lights on or lights off? <laughs> um, lights dim. <laughs> yeah. From the lamp. And read no. a book. 
I what you mean. No, I mean romantic lighting is not glaring. Yeah, no, no, we're not making a porn movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, so dim lights. Yeah, I right. get that. <clears throat> dim the lights. Yeah, that sounds uh, like a Roxy Music song. <laughs> <laughs> dim the lights. You could get the rest. <laughs> Yes, we got Niall. I was Ro- like hanging out with Bill. It's like <clears throat> it's quite Roxy music in here, though. Yeah, Niall Rogers does a guitar thing on that song. Amazing! I've got a big. I'm. A, I mean, I met. I love Brian Ferry. Brian Ferry. Roxy music. Is oh right. He's okay. a singer. Okay. Sing. Yes, I think Roxy music has some good stuff. Great. Stuff, I mean, it's yeah. it's you. We're we're migrating. Thankfully, away from Lou Reed and Yoko to oh <laughs> Roxy Music. Never, never come no, back, no. Patty Smith. No, I, I love that you. Uh, Patty Smith, oh, love Patty uh, Smith. Okay, let's go more toward Neil Diamond. Remember, we love Neil Diamond. Patty Smith's amazing. <laughs> I know these people are amazing. No, amazing, but, amazing. Uh, it is me. I am unworthy. I am unworthy. My ears. You never palette. heard "Free Money" by <laughs> Patty Smith? Uh, maybe I have. Oh. I'll get send it. Send Free me money. your list. It's on the Google. Google it. Okay. You'll, no, I will. I want to wanna know. I do this. I do. Have this, someone Google it for you. I do this all the time. I like. It's it's so primitive. People will think, but I download because I still. Can want I ask it. you? Are you a, rom- a romantic? Um, Is that like a bit of a uh, officially? Yeah, you. Are, you know, like. <laughs> I think so. I mean, I. Are you in a relationship? Why? What did you hear? I think probably you are. Um, yes. And what's his name? No. <laughs> <laughs> How is Bill? Um, um, anyway. Yeah, no, so you're married to another, you've got kids? N- not that I know of. Okay. okay. Do you? So you're romantic. No, no, I've got no kids, no. God, well, I'm, I'm 67 and I never got married. That's the much more salient point, you know? And if you do that, it's because you either don't like girls at all or you like them a lot. That's, oh, I see. that's so you what wanna... you need to know about me. Okay. Um, Say so butch. <laughs> that answer was so butch. I need to lie down. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You don't even have to try to be butch. That was like, okay. <laughs> That's what I was trying to it tell you. It was like you. intellectual butchness. It you was know, like... Well, I got to no, tell you. No, I get you. it, I get it, I get it. When I, I, get I, it, I get it. when I was in, you know, you have a vibe with... I'm not really into marriage for me. I can't think of anything more restrictive, you know. But I think you definitely get into certain people and you just, you know. Yeah, I mean. Not necessarily look, for all the right reasons, you know, there's never well, really a. Um, and I also think something that transcends gay straight is that it's hard to maintain the two things we want simultaneously, which is security and excitement. Yeah, I love they, that. I never thought of you like that, but in, it's, it, security and excitement. At the beginning, you have a lot of excitement, but not security. And as it goes like this, it... Unless you learn to be a, a better partner, which is always possible. <laughs> You're talking about me in particular? No, because or, I mean, are we being philosophical? I think that... Oh. Both, I think. Both. Not that I know much about you, but, like, my dad was an Aquarian. I hate it. <laughs> I'm more of a Capricorn, they say. Doesn't matter. They're close. <laughs> But they're like they're, neighbors. But they're supposed you could to lean in and borrow sugar from the Capricorn. Really? But, but yeah, they're supposed so to be close. opposites. But isn't like everything's seen in Yang, isn't it? Man and female, dark and light, you know, salt and pepper. Well, <laughs> so you can get into trouble. Gay and straight. See, you can get into trouble. I now, will. Now it is. Are you just, trying to get me in trouble? Just for saying uh, everything is binary. Binary is I never bad, said that, though. You, you did. You just said male and female, gay and straight. I said. There's that comparisons, is, they're juxtapositions. No, no, you're in trouble. Go away. Go away. Be, because <laughs> that is not how the woke think of things. Everything is on a sliding scale. There's no such thing as binary. And there the is, thing is, though, look, listen. There is nuances. Are of you course. accusing me of being woke? I'm accusing you of being un-woke. I was never asleep. <laughs> I don't need to be woke. I was, no. I was... But uh, that's their point of view as opposed to... Uh, gay and straight, male and female, like everything is sort of. But even always, that's there. Everything like is, they're a thing, a is, is, a, is a jump ball, and we should reorganize society around the idea that everything is very fluid, and, and we're not really quite there yet. Maybe we'll evolve to that, but now most people are either male or female, or gay or straight. There are 
absolute variations, but it's such a tiny percentage. It is it is inappropriate the amount of energy we put toward. I think making that seem like uh, it's it's possible for everybody with yeah. It's not likely. It's just not likely. I don't really have a fixed opinion on it. I think that you know it's so individual. I know a lot of gay men. I know lots of the trans people. Oh, I know. I know lots of trans people though, so I'm pissed off at the gay men. <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately, I'm pissed off at the gay men because, like, there was a gay pride parade and there was no. But there's always listen, Bill. There's always, sorry, getting excited now. Speaking yeah. of Shirley Bassey, um, there's always someone to dislike, isn't there? In every generation, there's always got oh, someone they hate. Oh well, and it, we've all been through it. I was it in the '70s. Really. But, uh, Oh, you mean you know, in, in, you know, yeah, in, 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 in you know, Southeast London, England, you know, I went on my first march before I realized you had to protest to be gay. <laughs> I was like, why is to be okay to a protest? I think for me, my whole existence became a sort of funny protest, but right. like with, yeah, a, but yeah. with, a, with, with a sense of humor. That's a great... You're laughing at me, but guess what? I'm laughing you at you what? too. <laughs> that is a great theme and title for an album. I'm laughing at you. No, you're... protest. <laughs> protest. Like you, you said, you just said that about I, my life has been a protest. Yeah. Do that as an album theme. Protest. Right? But who will I piss off everyone? <laughs> like when you... <laughs> no, when... no. I, listen, I don't ever write anything with the sort of mission of pissing anyone off. It's really just a, you're, you know. You're past having to worry about it. What can they do to you? Ban me. No. I'm already cancelled. I mean, you'd have to go. You'd have to go. You've already told me I don't exist to anyone over forty. So you would have to go. A whole load of people I can forget about. Sweetheart, <laughs> you you would have to go full Kanye to get cancelled at this point. And you don't say things like that. You say. Well, I don't feel say, things like that either. You, so you that's say, the difference. I don't feel things like that. I just, you know, I never find myself getting into such an extreme feeling that I have to. I can't breathe before I say something about somebody or... But there's a difference between, like, <laughs> the Jews or whatever he was saying about the Jews, God love them, and just like you and I do, we just say things that are true that piss people off because they don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to be confronted with it. Yeah. But it's not like it's untrue. There's a big, And people know that. What, they so might not what, admit it, but they know that it. What Kanye is saying is untrue or true. What do you mean? I don't think it's true that the... <laughs> I don't think it's true. <laughs> the, the Jews... I think, it, I think that it's very easy to kind of take your own pain and spew it onto someone else. The Jews dominating show business, where does he get this nonsense? Well, my manager's Jewish. And I was I very specific. Saying, I was very specific. Yeah. I want a British manager. And yes, I want him to be Jewish. So why didn't you ever move here if you love America so much? Well, I kind of hear all the time. But, I don't but need to live here. But you live in England. I think one of the reasons I work so well here is because you can send me home. You know, it's <laughs> like I'm not. You know, it's like when I was in Russia. Not that I'm comparing, but when I was in Russia, walking through Russia in a tutu, dressed as Lee Bowery, I remember thinking, they're just never going to bother me because it's so. Re <laughs> they know I'm not from there. Right. <laughs> they knew I wasn't Russian. Right. Every club I went into, it was like I was just. Fine, because mm. it was so extreme. They were like, "Yeah, it's from somewhere else. <laughs> it's not from here." Whereas, and I do feel a bit like. Well, so, w what year is this in Russia? Like nineties. I was going there just after, like, so Lesnos. before Putin. Before Putin, the but after the fall of communism. Oh yeah, yeah, I went there. Yeah, and they were like so mad because we did a gig there and. Um, Wow. Sponsored by the French government, and kids were coming up to me and going, Oh, we bought your records in the 80s and we hid them. Right. And I was like, Oh my God. Right. That's kind of mad. I liked it. I liked it. Well, look, I'm going to hell. Oh. That's a, that's a boy. You're in sickle. It's a boy, yeah. For what does a boy. that mean? It was a relationship I had with someone. Who was a, com <laughs> was a communist? Well, he was, it was a sort of rock and roll y comedy, sort of, you know, guns and roses. <laughs> but that's a hammer and sickle. It's a very I specific know. symbol I know, but you're of communism. Should I get it covered up? I, I'm just telling me what's the. Do you think the, I should get it covered up? What's the 
Well, it has no meaning other than I was in love with someone who was from Russia. What's the connection with communism and this guy? That's what I grew up with, like that symbol and the star <laughs> and red and gold. The star? Yeah, the star. What, what? That's the star on the flag, the yellow star. That's on not on the, there. On the Russian well, flag. There's a star there, look. <clears throat> well, stars can be in Don't read too much into it. Israel has a star Don't flag. read too much. I've got a mug and on the top of my head. <laughs> I have. So, yeah. I was... I'm, Concentrate I, on this. I, <laughs> I've never been a tattoo. I've got a, I've got a Star of David on the top of my head, and I was on a plane once. I and, never understood the whole point of, like, something is meaningful to you. Okay, great. Same thing happens to me. Things happen that are meaningful. I don't say, you know what we make this better? If I inked it into my body. It's commitment, love. But I have it in my mind. You've got commitment issues. It, it, it reminds me of those, what are those, those uh, crypto things they sell, like where they sell a picture. Oh, I've done that. NFTs. NFTs, right. I'm an NFTs. It's like... Look, Bowie, yeah. come on. It doesn't... I actually remember wow. the two most important people in my life. Right, that's Bowie and That's Bowie and that's Mark Bowie. Oh, wow, T-Rex. A lot of people think it's Slash. Bang a gong, get it on. Get it, we do that in our show, yeah. Get still, it on, yes. bang a gong. Oh, you do that in your show. Get it on. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Mark Boland. Mark right. Boland's like one of my... What a record, right? All-time heroes. Best lyricist See. on the planet. Now, his lyrics make any sense. I had a car, it was old, it was kind. I gave it my mind and it disappeared. That's cool. That's awesome. No, that's okay. There's something. More than okay. I understand. Yeah, exactly. She it's was that, born to be my unicorn. Oh, that's a that's <laughs> genius. That's a great lyric. She was I born love to be my oh, that's unicorn. Sweet, yeah. so, there's so many, which is why I ended up writing songs like Carmen Chameleon, just because they sound, I like the words. I, you know what, I'm, I'm going to get every, I, I don't know enough uh, Mark Bull and T-Rex, but there wasn't a lot of albums, were there? Loads. <laughs> like, I, like I, I mean, say, what you say loads, <laughs> like, there was T-Rex Tanks, there was Electric Warrior, there was Slider. Okay. So it was like three or four. See, this is, this is great. An early T-Rex as well. There was T-Rex, Tyrannosaurus Rex. There was, the, you know, the, there was a lot of poetry and This is why I love stuff. the iPod, because like, I'll go to my computer <laughs> and I want to pay for the music because there are, you know, Spotify, fuck them. Uh, and I will get, like, I'll get, I'll get a, I'll get Yoko, I'll get, T-Rex, that I haven't heard these albums, and I'll get something from new, like I always get like three at a time, and I'll listen to those for like a couple of weeks, and it's it's great, because yeah, I maybe, maybe the, I could see that there could be some great t stuff. I get a lot of stuff. friends turning me on to like current stuff, you know, and some of it sticks, some of it doesn't, you know, it's like if I like the song, but to me it's more about if I like the person, I watch them being interviewed, Sometimes a song is just great, and you go, it's a great song. Oh, I thought End you were of. kidding about that. No, but sometimes when I see <laughs> like people... No, sometimes I like... No, no. Sometimes I just don't like a person enough to put up with a badly I mean, written song. A part, it's getting played on the radio. A rock, <laughs> <laughs> a, rock star, over and over and over. a rock star has to be some kind of huge prick. For me, you have to be a to, snob. to not listen to a song I like, because I know they're a huge prick. I think it could happen where I, I think it has happened where like I just I just can't listen. Like listen. when people think they've invented the weird, you have to put them right. But I, I certainly don't. It doesn't bother me, Michael Jackson, and I feel like he committed some heinous anus crimes, and uh, I still love Michael Jackson songs that I love. Yeah, you know, I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, I, maybe it should, if I was a better person, always enter my mind when I heard his song about the crimes he committed. But you know what? I can separate them. And I know if, I don't want to be apologetic about it. Mm. Right? Yeah. I mean, you know. I like Michael Jackson. I liked Michael Jackson when I was at school. I used to remember hearing Ben when I was about 10 yeah. or something. I mean, they wanted to cancel Wagner because Hitler connection. Yes, there was a connection, but Hitler liked him. He didn't like Hitler. He was reminds me of like the time when our prime minister was a conservative prime minister, David Cameron, said he liked the Smiths oh, yes. and they were devastated. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Breaking news. Yeah, David Cameron's a Smiths <clears throat> fan. They were devastated. They were like... Except, again, <laughs> you, you should actually... You cannot decide who likes your music. But you should be a lot more 
thankful about this, that you're like conservatives that you make fun of, that you think are... I don't make fun of conservatives. Oh. Ah, what, just by being me? <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying David Cameron was like some sort of conservative. Oh, full-on conservative, like but, proper. But, like but for the Smiths, it was a big deal. For me, I'd be like, of no, course I'm, they like my but music. I, I'm just saying your conservatives are like much more mature. And they're not like crazy out there. David Cameron, we would kill for a David Cameron to be running the Republican Party. Do you, you understand what no, I'm no, saying? No, I get it. I get we it, would I get kill. It. Who would you choose right now then? Uh, Among the, the actual well, candidates? I've, I've been watching. Who would you choose out of all of the, how many is there? In the Republican Party? In, that, in the school. Okay. There's this guy, Tim Scott. Yeah, I know who he is. Yeah. yeah. He I, seems reasonable. Yes. But then I have to look uh, at what he thinks about certain things. Although, actually... You're never going to agree with everything. I'm, exactly. And also, I'm a Brit, so I... Brit-Irish. I, you know, as I say, I can watch it from a sort of slightly more impartial point of view to a certain extent. But if it was Tim Scott versus Joe Biden, I could see weighing that, whereas I would, out of hand, dismiss a lot of other Republicans against what Joe What about him against Trump? Well, I mean, Tim Scott is against Trump. That's, oh, they're see. both Republicans. But they're in the party, but it's a weird one. But, well, you know, that, I'm just that's saying. the primary. I mean, one of them will be the king. No, if they ended up running, those two would be interesting. But they see. can't run against each other. They're in the same oh, party. Oh, see, so one enough to be knocked yes. out. Okay. So they're in the, hoping the, the for... semifinals. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> football, football. Get it. Okay, yeah, yeah, Tim Scott's trying to take Tell me it. a little. Right. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I mean, it's going to be Trump. You think? Of course. He's ahead by like 40 points. It's interesting. It's really... Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's well, he's already been president. I mean, it, it, that's an unprecedented thing for someone who has the stature as crazy as he is to be, oh, I'm in the Republican primary. Uh, maybe you know my credentials. I was president and this guy's a fucking you know, farmer. And okay, you have a biopharmaceutical company. Congratulations. So we're back to We're back to I used to have my own plane with military equipment on it. So fuck off. You know, that's... He says, I saw his plane in, when I was in Florida. I was impressed. Politics. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Politics is show business. He's the biggest star. He's he, Shirley Bassey. He, <laughs> well, she wasn't the biggest star. <laughs> Shirley Bassey was never a big star. Oh, and in the UK she was. Oh, really? In the yeah, UK I guess she was so. a huge, okay. she's a legend in the UK. Not in, not so, in America. Not in America, but in, in, in right. England she is showbiz royalty legend, total legend. Goldfinger, right? Yeah, never, 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 never. There's many. But that's what we, we, I mean. Jazz, you know, jazz, that kind of more. But Goldfinger was sexy yes, as. Insane. Sexy as fuck. You want to get back to fingers again, don't you? You just want to <laughs> get back to. <laughs> the man with the Midas touch. <laughs> Such a cold touch. All the time. You know, what do people say to me? Woo! What's, uh, what turns you on about a man? Indifference. Really? You know, just, yeah. yeah Is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But why? What do I you mean, like in a in a in a female? The Someone opposite. That's eager, that's different, chasing you, <laughs> chasing you. If, like the opposite, chase. if the opposite of indifference <laughs> is difference, I'm looking for difference. How about you want someone to give you compliments? Well, or? like I, I I learned when I was like 19 that oh you know the way to go isn't to uh, think movies are real and that when you meet someone who fucking hates you at the beginning. It's going to turn out good. No, probably the one who doesn't like you at the beginning is going to stay not liking you. So don't like work so hard, like winning over someone who doesn't like. Go for the people who like you already, who you seem to vibe with. I mean, even as dumb as I was in my twenties, I kind of got that. Have you been married? If you oh, you've never been married. No, you told me that. Already. <laughs> never you been married. That. Tell me that. Perfect never... record. Wow. Would you have gotten married if it was illegal in all those years? Mm. No. No, it always felt like very, for me personally, I, obviously I was upheld anyone's right to do whatever they want, you know, to a certain extent. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, it wasn't something I really aspired to. Cause and are you in a me. relationship now? Maybe. You see, I didn't want to answer, but I... <laughs> and you're like, maybe. Well, good. I, I'm not well, lonely. Yeah, we're, 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 we're... I'm not crying we're over my... We're private. Let's keep I'm our, not crying over my Opus Records. Let's keep our assholes private. Oh, none of that. <laughs> 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 not publicly, anyway. No. I think that... No, I mean, look... I no always said I wanted to, to grow old disgracefully, but I think that's probably <laughs> not true. 
I think I'm a little bit more. That is green. I have a bit more self-preservation than I thought I had. Grow old disgracefully. That is genius. It's very strange, actually. It's really strange because you just forget where you are. It's weird. Everyone well, says that. Well, that's the right? nicest compliment you could give me. Everyone that says that. Was, that was my goal here. Was like, how can I can I actually make people forget where they are? And that we're just not being exactly who we are. I mean, actually, and say, I feel like we were exactly who we are on stage. <laughs> I, have better or worse. I have this thing on stage now where I say to the audience, actually, I feel like I'm in my living room, but I'm dressed up a bit better right. than I would be at home. Right. But that's a real thing for me that to find that kind of mm. relaxation in a in a space like that, where there's a lot of people staring at you, you know, like a mad tennis match or something. Yeah. And you, how do you act normal in that situation? I mean, you do. You know, you, you're a public person, so you must have some of that, you know, with the... Do you get scared of the audience ever or not? Scared of the audience? No. No. It's funny, and I've had... <clears throat> Were you ever scared of the audience? Well, I put it out of my mind. Look, I mean, I've said many controversial things and have had both sides mad at me. You stand by them still, <clears throat> the controversial things you said? Of course. <laughs> you've never changed your mind about of something? Of course not. Ever? Ever. What's the most controversial <laughs> thing you've ever said? Oh, Am I allowed to ask you? No, you're not. Well, I have. <laughs> and if that's the most controversial thing I've ever done, how's sad? It, I mean, I, I got into big trouble after 9-11. Okay. You know, stuff like that. My hairdresser's a conspiracy theorist. He explains why I wear hats. <laughs> <laughs> and my hairdresser in London, is uh, he'll go mad. He, not a conspiracy, he calls himself a critical thinker. He's very precise. And he is, he's great. I often, when I'm traveling, I'll send messages saying, what do you think about this? I love having Hamilton's view on the world because it's so, he mm. spends time, he does all the stuff. I won't read the manual. I'm not going to go online and read things. <laughs> Just listen to someone smart like yourself. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. You think that's dangerous? You, well, it's... It's lazy I, research, it's called. I love that you were like, well... He thinks of himself as a critical thinker, but he's really a conspiracy theorist. I mean, those two do travel sometimes. He goes insane at me when I call him a conspiracy theorist. So. But like one man's critical thinker is the other man's, exactly. you know. But he has been not, right about some things. Not that sometimes right. he gets it right. Not that, that's, that, yes, I mean. But if you hate everyone, you're always going to get to us. <laughs> you know, if you're sort of cynical from the well, beginning. But that's the problem, I think, today more than ever, is that people make decisions not on what they really think about something. They never engage with the issue itself, if they can. It's just about whose team am I on and who do I hate? How can I use this issue to show how much I hate you? I'm lucky I don't really hate people. I don't either. I can't be bothered. It's I so hate hate. It's time consuming. No. It's such a, you know what I mean? It is time consuming. And it also means that when you get locked into that thing, I mean, when I was younger, I definitely had an appetite for revenge. I could wait years to get revenge on someone. <laughs> you know, I could. Not, not anything bad, but just, you know, I don't know, just to get them back. Right. And now I just can't be bothered. Now I'm just like, but I'm over because it already. you won. I blocked That's, them. Well, but you, <laughs> you won the game. You know, yeah. you're boy George and they're not. That's it. Like, it's so much easier... Do I wish I was younger? Yeah, but it's but like psychologically, it's so much easier to live in this head where like I've already gotten past the one thing that had me enduring more anxiety than anything else, which is am I going to be a failure or am I going to have a good life where I'm fulfilled and appreciated? And it turned out I did. That's good. That yeah. that made the my early. Do you have to work on it though. Like I feel like it's for me personally. Yeah, I have to remember everything has to be fun. You know what I mean? On the road, in the dressing room. Fun? Did you? Fun. fun. And that's yeah. a dangerous word. Fun. I don't mean like fun as in like. Ugh, right. But <laughs> it has to just you know. I get a lot of pleasure out of which blows my mind now. Doing nothing. <laughs> like sitting around, but doing it well. I don't mean just like doing nothing as in like, I'm bored. I'm not actually going, no, I'm actually really seeking to do nothing, think nothing, right. feel nothing, whatever but, it may be. But, there's, but you don't mean you're just sitting still doing nothing. Yeah, you're, yeah. It's called <laughs> meditation. <laughs> you're not, oh, you're really? You're not, you're not reading and watching TV? Sometimes I, I can get locked into the TV thing and start okay. to, 
But news is relentless now. It's the same right. thing every 20 <clears throat> minutes. It's over and yeah. over and over and over. No, I don't watch cable news. So I try to avoid that um, right. as no, much as I can. Listen to music. Better. Listen yeah. to music. Hang out with great people. But those are things. So you're not doing nothing. I'm the same way. I love time no, off. No, but sometimes sitting in front of the <clears> TV watching, you know, The Price is Right. Right. Is well, fucking, I no, I love The Price is Right. Okay. <laughs> but I, I mean, I watch TV every day. Family like fortunes. Night. Yes. Particularly in America. Not so much in no. the UK, but here I love it. You cannot, People get so excited. The last hour of my day is always watching TV. It's the it's the cherry on top of a day yeah. for me. And it's you know, What do you watch on just well, anything? I, I, I certainly wouldn't watch the price is right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like five hundred brilliant streaming shows. I would no. Yeah, but, yeah of course but, I, I mean, do that a, as well. But, I know. I'm just But in that sort of you know, when you don't want to commit to like a series or watch a movie from the beginning and that's I like, don't want to commit to a series. Are you never? Well, I mean, do you I stop and say, start? Do you go back to No, something? I just feel like most series are not worthy of a series. They should smush it into one good movie. Are you like that with records where you like play a few bars? And I used to do that as a DJ. I used to like play about four or four bars and know it wasn't for me. Uh, yeah. Just on the hi hat and the bass drum. Well, that's the thing I think we all go through when you're starting a show. You're like, geez, do I want to like commit and. I don't want to like lose this hour. I already invested in that, but I don't want to be the idiot who's chasing good money after bad. Should I keep watching? And like sometimes you do, and you're halfway through, and you go, you know what? I gave you enough time, you fuckers. I gave you more than enough time, and you didn't turn it around. No, I guess I'm never going to see if the baby gets kidnapped at the end or <laughs> whatever the fuck it is. You know what? So. <laughs> well, you know, what are we th- talking about? Well, I think that, I think what we're I don't know. I feel <clears throat> I'm, I'm saying not that I'm trying to say anything, because I'm trying to avoid being sort of one of those people that says things. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Just that you know, like sometimes real happiness is in the mundane. Totally. In fact, I think it's only in the mundane, it, it, and it's well, like okay. See, because I'm a Capricorn, wink, wink. Yeah. Okay, like I'm like are. an wink, wink. an or. <laughs> <laughs> That's like I'm an organizational freak. So I can be so happy like puttering around the house organizing shit. On your terms though. What do you mean on my terms? It's my house. Yeah, yes. But you, but you live with other people, right? I, t- I live with other people, of course not. Yeah, you they're don't. named Chico and Chula. They have four legs. Those your are... partner lives somewhere else in the tree house? <laughs> 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 what are you, no, Ro- what are you, Rona Barrett? <laughs> <laughs> fuck, off. fuck off with my, oh, I'm dating or whatever. <laughs> Shut up. I live alone is all you need to know. I live alone. That's a great line for everyone's song. Did you ever hear this? Sino- Listen, we need a oh. piano player. I live alone. No, no. That's all you need to know. I, I, it writes itself. I got, <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I got to recommend an album to you. you you're going to love this. A Man Alone. By who? Frank Sinatra. I would know that record, I'm sure. It's a concept album written by a gay poet. Are you lying now? I am not lying. Rod McEwen was a gay poet in 1969. He wrote an album for Frank Sinatra called A Man Alone. It's amazing music. Is it helpful? It's themeful. Well, it's about, you know, Frank is now over 50, and he's like, in me you see a man alone, but not lonely, see? <laughs> except when the darkness... I met Frank Sinatra. Except when the darkness comes. I met him. And? It was amazing. You blew him? But I, no, 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 but I <laughs> kind of, you know, it's, it, I ended up writing about it in a song, because at the time... Really? Yeah, I ended up... Would, yeah, you, would you have blown him if he if he said he wanted to? <laughs> no, really. Would you? I mean, it's Frank Sinatra. You wouldn't want it to say just to see the White House. Just to <laughs> <laughs> just to say you'd had his cock in your mouth. I will never ever desecrate the memory of Frank Sinatra by answering that question. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that as a Fuck yeah. Off. Take that as a yes. <laughs> Fuck off! I still love Nancy Sinatra. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, These amazing. boots are made for walking. Yeah, so good. But how creepy was it <clears throat> that they sang a romantic duet as a father and daughter? I think team? you looked for the dark in most things. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not. The, I don't think I am the only one. Do you know what song I'm talking about? 
something stupid. Then I go and say it all by saying something stupid like you're ugly. You. <laughs> <laughs> we had that version of that, you know, back in the day. You know it. Yeah, I know that song, of course. Now, that came out in 1966. Yeah. How old were you? God, I was a child. 66? Mm -hmm. Four or five. You think you heard it then in your I house? I knew that song. From, from being in the house? I don't know if I knew it <clears throat> at that. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a really famous song in the UK. Right. I might even have had 45, that maybe it was, because my dad was a builder, so my dad used to take stuff from out houses that people had run away from, or the other thing in the UK called a moonlight flit, where you, you know, <laughs> no. stack your bills, leave all your belongings. Oh. So we used to get a lot of these records, so I heard a lot of stuff because of that, but also that record was on the radio. Nancy Sinatra, these bits made for walking. Morrissey loves Nancy Sinatra as well, so they're friends. The stars are <laughs> red, the perfume fills my head. Come on, man. You know you got a heart on when you heard that. Probably not. I did. <laughs> because Nancy Sinatra was hot. But it was, oh, see, yeah, different. But see, I was in love with Lou Reed. It see? did seem wrong. She was singing it with her <laughs> father. Okay. But again, it's a song. It was it's very real life. It was like, it should be redone by Trump and Ivanka. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. Somebody out there, please do an AI of Trump and Ivanka singing something stupid. Oh, no, I thought you meant Melania. I was like, oh, my God, he's dragging me into no, the dark. No, because it's corner. the daughter who he really loves. Don't push me into corners that are so dark. I mean, that is dark that <laughs> Trump has this, I mean, maybe he's, maybe that's an exaggeration, but he does seem like, in a, he, he's not uh, afraid to be inappropriate in talking about his daughter in like how hot she is and her tits. And If that was a comedian though, would you like say, do you say it was okay? No, I just, it just points to the, my theme with Trump is always, he's, he's stupid and he's crazy. He's both things. <laughs> Like, See, that sounds like a song to me. Well, he's stupid and he's crazy. <laughs> or so, something stupid. Could be in my Trump opera. I might write a Trump opera. <laughs> I mean, he's 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 perfect for an opera character. Don't you think? Well, of course. Like Jerry Springer. Well, bigger than life, and people, everybody knows the story, and I mean, they would shit on it, but then they would go to it because it's interesting. You put Ben Ethel Merman in there, you'll be laughing. As Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're both blondes with big tits. <laughs> You're fucking funny. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> You're really you going to write funny. an opera about Trump? I know, I thought about it last I, night, I but think, it was... I think it's a great idea, actually. I just love this whole moment of, yeah. of sort of, you know, that whole thing walking as a football Well, jump. you just have to wait till we have the information that would provide the final act. Like, what is the final act? Is he reinstated like uh, Eva Peron to the presidency, which could happen next year? He could definitely. Don't cry for me, I can Tina. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I can Tina. <laughs> That's hysterical. I don't know. It's funny. You know, sometimes I watch like pop culture and I think, oh, it'd be great to know what's going to happen like six months from now. I'd love to be able to jaunt forward and not that I want to lose that precious time, but yeah. it's fascinating where we'll be. This time next year. Well, I'm how we'll be I, thinking about life and things, and I'm just always thinking about you. And as far as you go, an opera about Trump, you can't do it until there is the denouement. There okay. has to be. We have to have a an ending to this. It can't be in medias res. Okay, well, a, I'll put it on as, hold then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And he could live to 100. I don't know. Um, I, I mean, David could, Burns just done a musical about... Um, he could haunt this country for another name? 20 years. I mean, Imelda Marcos, David Burns' yes. show. Yeah. What do you think about that? I mean... I like David Burns, though. I do, too. I had That's him on my, him him on my show. Like, he he does. I went great. to see Moulin Rouge, and I love the fact they've got Burning Down the House in that. Such a great song. It's so out of context in that show, but it's you just realize, yeah, it's a great tune. I love that tune. You're uh, Petrified is a great song. It is. That's a great show, too. That was actually a bit... That's the... To me, that and the final song, those are the winners. For I have to tell you that that song, Petrified, was kind of written in a, in a style of like Lennon and Yoko. 
If you heard the intro to that, if you heard the original okay. demo, I pre- no, you can laugh. You no, can laugh. no, no, I'm, I'm not laughing. I w- I'm going to listen to what you recommend. I'm going to, or I'll just go to. I even uh, imagine her singing that chorus. I am. When you're alone. So it's a T Rex. At night, do you run and hide? It's a T Rex. Great. It's a T Rex, very okay. I'm always rooting for the music to be good. <laughs> When I buy it, I am rooting for the music to succeed. Inside? I'm rooting, really. I have to find the demo of me singing it like Yoko, almost impersonating her. I'm just, but I'm just telling you, at least here in America, the common perception of Yoko is shrieking. It's it's atonal shrieking. Which well, yeah, but that's because people haven't explored. Okay, you're right. Maybe she's got a cover of Crimson and Clover that's going to yeah, knock me on my songs. ass. She's really good. <laughs> okay. It'd be interesting I, to see how... I, I am so anxious to, to have this We settled. will change our minds about Yoko, I promise you. You heard it here first. I'm rooting for it, babe. <laughs> I am so rooting for it, really. I love her. I think she's amazing. I always want more good Also, I love Lennon. Yes, And of I course. think he had good judgment. Yeah, I mean... Not always, but I think he had... Yeah. He loved Yoko, though. Yes, but when you watch the Peter Jackson Let It Be Get Back, did you watch it, the nine hours? No. No? No. No. What did they say? Do they slug off Yoko? (laughs) (laughs) You're not... Tell me now so I can skip forward. You're not that interested in the Beatles? No, I'm obsessed with the Beatles, but not to the extent that I want to watch a nine-hour film. Okay, well then... I watch it in bits. I might have watched bits of Anyway, actually. it's interesting. Can it's I, a colorization can I, of Can I yeah. summarize it for you? Yeah, go on. Would you be interested? Of course. Do. Okay. Uh, and this is as a real Beatle file. You think I talk a lot? No, I don't. You talk much more than I do. I, I, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not counting. It's not a, it's oh, not, I am. It's not, a, it's not a competition. I went on that show. I barely spoke. <laughs> go on, tell well, me. That, we know that's hardly true. <laughs> tell me about this. Okay, nonsense. so the big takeaway is that I mean, for you, for you. F- trust me, trust me. You, for everyone. Trust me, me at this point. Don't okay. you? This is unmistakable. I'm gonna, no I'm one could agree. argue with it. I can. Okay. It is a snapshot of time. It is, the mo- it is one month of their lives, January 1969. Mm. So I'm only talking about a month. one month of their life. But in that month, I promise you, John Lennon and Paul McCartney did not hate each other. There's nine hours of footage. You can't hide it. They are still in love with each other. Not, mm. you know, in a... <laughs> That's just the detail, though. Okay. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. But eye contact, jokes between themselves, just laughing, kidding around, silly sh- shit that mm. lovers do. Yeah. And the other two Beatles are there, and they like them, but it's just so obvious he ignores Yoko the whole time she's there. She's like a potted plant. She sits there. He never even talks to her. She's just there. He's locked in with Paul McCartney. That you was the she took Paul down. That was the Beatles, apparently. Now that the other two weren't great because they were, but these two had a thing. George Harrison, sorry, my well, hero. <laughs> yes, me too. Okay. I mean, I and, know, and Ringo too. Come on, Ringo's amazing. I love Ringo. Ringo's amazing. Okay. But this was the group. Every group has a nexus. And well, yeah, but it's also the sum of its parts, isn't it? It's like why something works is because he was in the room sometimes. Yes and no. Yes and no, but yes and no. If it no and yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is no disrespect to George Harrison and Paul McCar- and uh, Ringo Starr, but if it had just been John and Paul, they probably, I mean, they made one record. But if you only wrote Here Comes the Sun, that's enough. That's a great record. You know, or yeah. While My Guitar Gently we Yeah, he wrote all, I'm a big George Harrison fan. What's the other one? Oh, there's, 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 there's hundreds of them. Yeah. Not hundreds, no. But there's, there's more than people know. You know Poor Little Girl, George Harrison? Yeah. Cheer so, Down, not no, I'm well-known a massive, tracks massive that are George awesome. Fan. Yes. And also, you know, the thing is, I caught onto the Beatles quite late, you know, I was missed the sort of mania because I was a child, but I caught onto the more mm-hmm. psychedelic, you know, Sgt. Pepper, Revolver, all that stuff is when I got into the Beatles. Right. When they were being really experimental and, you know. Well, George, I mean, George Harrison invented the charity rock concert, which I know you did. Band- Bangladesh ba- concert. You did Band-Aid. 
I did the record, not the gig. Not right. The show, not the show. I did live. Didn't do live A, but I did but the record. The, the Christmas, right? I did the Christmas one, yeah. Don't they, what is it? Uh, feed the World. But wasn't it, don't, do they know it's Christmas? Yeah, Feed the World. Feed, we call it Feed the World. Such <laughs> a, that's, that's been in my <laughs> Christmas playlist. For That's a great Christmas song. It is a good song. We'll it see. is a good, good song. It's, it's just a really good record. Yeah. Anyway, but he invented that in 1971 with the concert for Bangladesh. Although, as a brilliant comedian friend of mine pointed out, perhaps the most unfortunate, inartful lyric ever was, Bangladesh, Bangladesh, it sure looks like a mess. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Bangladesh. <laughs> but a great song. It works. The song is great. It works. George Harrison had a way of writing, like, uh, upbeat songs with like downbeat lyrics. But that's, I think that's me. It's kind of, Happy yeah, sad. no, it can kind of be great. Oxymoron. Right. It's like a, you know, I've just worked on something that's. Do you know the song he uh, made for, for John Lennon after John Lennon was killed uh, called uh, All Those Years Ago? No. No? Is that Paul God. McCartney? No, Paul McCartney. Oh, George Harrison. George, George Harrison. Paul did a, a, a song called Here Today. That mm. was his tribute. You know that one? Yeah, I th I mean, obviously all these, well, I mean, so much of stuff but that I've heard for all, years. All those years ago is an awesome record. It's a great upbeat rocker, but the lyrics are all about like John Lennon. Yeah, I'm more of a, I mean, I'm a Bowie obsessive. That's I know. really where my area of expertise right. in terms of, you know, if I was going to. Well, he was great. If I was going to do a quiz, <laughs> it would be a Bowie quiz. Although I probably get a lot of that wrong now anyway, because I've, you know, I've been immersed in my own stuff for so long. You know, don't, I'm not a teenager anymore. So, but the Bowie still pretty much know every lyric to every song he ever wrote. And you are a teenager. You're a teenager in your mind. See, that's one of the great things about not marrying or having children, is that you're still like the youngest person of your immediate DNA. You know what I mean? Like, there's no version 2.0 of you, so you're still having to hold up the part of life that is fun <laughs> and... You know. I think I pursue joy in a way that I didn't when I was younger. And it's not particular things that make me happy. Kind of everything sort of makes me happy. I don't want to be gross, but like even the smell of my own farts can be such a pleasure. <laughs> well, it was a pleasure to have you over, boy, George. <laughs> Good luck with all your future projects. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I know. Are you when, running away from I, me now? I know when to wrap up an interview. <laughs>